Hey guys, I was working on this tutorial for creating uh, the factory method pattern and I picked up a JSON to demonstrate that. But then I realized something new has been introduced in uh, Swift 4, which makes it easier to actually work with JSON files or even JSON data, which is coming from, let's say, from the server. This is called uh, JSON decoder and uh, decodable to two keywords which you might start hearing as soon as you start using Swift 4. So what does they do actually? Uh, when I entered um, iOS app programming, I pre previously used to work on AngularJS or Laravel or C Sharp. Some of the platforms, let's say uh, Android and C Sharp, they already had something which can translate your JSON to a class directly, an object directly. If you have a definition for that JSON already. So I was when I came to iOS app development, I, I found this lacking. And it's almost like 10 years that the iOS app development been happening. Maybe because it is some limitation with Objective C, but then in the last version, even in the last version of uh, Swift 3, I, I was really surprised nothing was there which can make it easier to uh, work with JSON. I had to rely on some third party third party libraries like uh, Swifty JSON to do that. But even then, it was not as smooth as you would expect. Let's say if you're using uh, JSON, uh, one of the frameworks in Android, which just converts your file, uh, which converts your JSON to uh, an object, which 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 is quite easier to consume in a sense. So with Swift 4, we have something similar. It's very easy to use and you just have to define something called as JSON decoder and accept the data and then pass that class which you need to, which actually represents your JSON data and this just translates it to the object file, uh, which is pretty much uh, cool, I guess, because this makes sense because you uh, end up being writing uh, very less code just to have uh, parsing uh, your data in the JSON format. So with this background, uh, let me just give you a brief tutorial on how to use that even before I go to, let's say, um, the factory factory method pattern, which will actually be using this code base. So uh, I guess we can start off with this. So let's get started. So I already have uh, the project structure in place where uh, I have defined, uh, this is basically an app uh, which will actually represent all the teams which are playing in the uh, upcoming uh, World Cup uh, football where we have A to H groups and each groups has different teams. So I have just tried to translate that into a JSON format where uh, I have uh, a groups under which each group is defined and each group has uh, teams defined. And I also have added some logos in the assets so it's already there here all the country flags which i have included which will just be represented in a table view so what i'm trying to do is something similar to what you see here where when i choose uh, a group it just loads the country where, which is playing under that group so it's a simple app but it, uh, this is something a precursor to whatever i'm trying to do in uh, uh, the factory method pattern but then it's just starting with this json data so how do i consume this json data or even better if let's say i have an api there is an api actually available which i'm trying to integrate into this one right now it's just a json file which is having a basic data but then i'm planning to integrate an api which has more data in in terms of like what is the schedule of the play which is going to happen all that being consumed and I'll, there I'll be using Moya along with the, the uh, JSON decoder to actually represent this data and show all the schedules of all the matches which is going to happen. So that is something interesting coming up soon. So let me just uh, show you what is being done until now. So I have this, I've created, already created a groups collection view. Then uh, I have a table view representing the flag and the team name which is already there 
uh, so implementation wise it, there is nothing much i'll be creating a view model right now to actually use this and also i have this view controller ready uh, which is nothing but uh, a navigation controller embedded view controller where i just have a collection view and uh, the table view which i had represented right now so for this implementation to start so let me start uh, uh, i adding the code required so let's call it uh, a function let's call a create a function called uh, load uh, groups json where uh, i'll be passing the file name and then uh, which will in turn return something let's keep it void for the time being let me just show you what data gets loaded at that point so let's load the file right now bundle dot main dot uh, url so i have the resource string with an extension so my resource name is teams which is of type uh, json so that's a json file uh, with the extension json so if it is existing actually it is existing as teams json i will uh, load the content uh, data so the format is url so contents of url and options being uh, okay i just need the contents of url so it is throw type so i need to have try and and include it in a do catch if there is any error let's print it out and uh, that's my data so it, it is being read uh, using the url which we loaded which, which is nothing but this file and once you have this file next step is to create the decoder which is right now available with swift 4 so you just have to call uh, json decoder and just pass uh, just create that and then within the decoder uh, fetch the json data so you just have to call decoder dot uh, decode and pass the type and from which data so that's all we need to do type is which is now something which i need to create it is expecting a type so let me just create a file let me just call it uh, response data uh, struct it has to be a struct and it should implement something called as decodable right now this is the implementation which will identify that it needs to parse uh, the specific json so what does the response data look like so response data is uh, accepting a groups object so let's create that let's call it group details so, so now i need to create this struct decodable and uh, that's pretty much it so let's check it once more so my type is an object of type groups which is having an array of uh, uh, group objects so it is actually of type group so we have the group object so i guess i need to modify it a little this should be 
group data let's call it group data which is an array of group so that's what right now i have let's let's see what gets printed with whatever i have right now so that's my response data i just pass it and then pass the data uh, which is whatever we had uh, in the team's url which we got here so this is my json data what if i print it see so let's call it on you did load pass the team's name which is that file teams file which i have so if i run this so it gives an error call to throw so we need to keep a try over here as well so the group data is now printed so there are six eight six groups eight groups i guess yeah there are eight groups which gets printed right now so it's it has actually decoded the data so let's keep uh, working on that file on the response data i have now the groups data so it was an array as per the so it's a groups which is an array now we have uh, within that array we need to create individual objects so here you have a group object and then has the group detail so let's create one something called as a group object let's call it uh, group details can just call it group and then group details because you already have group struct decodable and each group has uh, if you can see okay i have another file where it is available so group has uh, name teams so let's just create the names create name which is of type string group detail has group uh, name and so we don't need to do anything much because we already have the uh, definition of uh, group details here it's using decodable so uh, swift forward can automatically do the um, the file whatever it, it can decrypt uh, whatever file uh, it can parse and then convert it into that object so it should now have the name part as well because we have uh, included that right now so it should at least print game a, game b all that group a all the group information so you see that it's printing right now group information as well group a group b group c all the group information so uh, next thing that we need to do is have another team object team let's call it team data which is of decodable type and uh, let's just have that and uh, each group if you can see in this uh, each group has teams array so we need to have an array of teams right now let's create that teams so that's a team data and each team has uh, each team array has uh, a team object as well so let's create that that one as well let's call it uh, team which is actually let me call it team details so again one more struct for that decodable and each team has all these name logo player and coach information i don't have the name players as and coach as yet so i'm just keeping it to the bare minimum let me just have the name and the logo part so that's all string when this is a string it's just the path of the uh, logo within the assets so 
it's it's more like it, it if you have logo as any as it will get uh, picked automatically so um this is pretty much my structure right now if you run it it should actually print out the whole structure of whatever is there in the json so it it, it gives you everything now each uh, country and the logo each and everything is now being passed by the whatever we have written here which is nothing but a one line of code passing the object which has decodable because of that it now can decode this object and give us the real object back so this json data is nothing but our object which we can actually get the groups loop through the groups or whatever we want let's say that if that is my um let's see if i have to get until the uh teams part i just have to do group dot group dot team so you have everything now like everything is passed and it's available in that object so that's the whole thing we are trying to do so let's just return this so json data we are returning and wherever we are consuming let's get that uh, response data so that's my response data so on first call we get that now we can use it to build our view so we already have the data now we just need to bind it to the view for that let me create uh, view models for representation purpose so i already have imported uh, uh, rx coco and rx swift which will make it easier for me to actually bind it to the uh, collection view and the table view so that's the only reason i'm using it we are uh, it it's up to the developer to choose however he wants to implement it but for simplicity i'm just giving it a use right now so so let me just keep on working on this so for each object group data i will uh, group data dot group is available for me so with this i can create view models let me create the view model let me call it uh, group date groups view model that's that's like the parent uh, view model for me for that view so because uh, if during a presentation this is the whole screen i have uh, and uh, i might i'm having the groups information here and each group selection will lead to uh, showing the table view teams information that's the only reason i'm going with uh, a name called groups uh, view model so uh, let's, let me create the presentables for that which is nothing but a protocol for a view model if you want to refer how to use view model you might have to just check back on some of the tutorials where i'm explaining how to use view models independently without rx swift or with rx swift all are available if you want to have a reference so groups view model is my view model groups view presentable implements it and what does it have i'm i'm going to have keep uh, two kinds of information here one is the groups information which is an uh, which uh, is uh, more like an array of uh, all the groups so for that i need protocol again so group view model let me call call it group view presentable so that's what is an array i'm keeping here and uh, so my group will have to implement it now so that's my groups uh, information uh, and because I'm using Rx Swift, I'm going to introduce something here. Rx Swift and uh, Rx Coco. So if you are aware of Rx, you can either use variable or uh, uh, which is nothing but uh, an object which can also work as a subscriber or, or an observer. So that's something which you might uh, you might have to refer some of the earlier tutorials which i had done and but um, as far as uh, 
uh, rx swift new version is concerned they are deprecating a variable instead they are giving something called as behavior uh, behavioral relay object which we might have to introduce here behavior relay so that's my object which is nothing but an object which can listen to changes and all and also you can set values to it so uh, i am creating that here and also i'll create uh, let me implement that and also uh, creating a variable for the teams elements which is again of type behavior re uh, relay for that i again need a protocol this is nothing but for the representation sake so team view model team view presentable i'm not using any uh, advanced rx with it's basic rx because uh, it's always good to have only basic in implementations of rx because the learning curve is too huge so that's the current uh, teams object and along with this i'll also introduce uh, the observable objects which can be so this can you can either call it directly uh, using groups or as observable but i prefer to keep this in this way so that if in a later point if i don't want to expose my uh, groups or current items uh, to the view i'll just give only the group observables to the view so that's only reason so this should be observable types so once you have the have it uh, consumed on the ui side uh, the view can subscribe to the changes happening and then if it is like for the table view or a collection view, you can bind it with this groups observable or the current teams observable objects so that's the whole thing i'm trying to do here so i have these two now current teams observe groups observer which i need to have it here and just keep it lazy whenever needed it gets loaded whenever whenever it is consumed it's it's used the memory so that's my current team start as observer and also the other one groups again lazy groups uh, dot as observer so that's also done for implementations and what all things uh, as of class has no okay it does not have any slices so let's just initialize these two objects as well behavior relay being an array i'll just initialize the array there so that's done now we are good with the view control view models right now let me introduce some things here for uh, the group view presentable i'm going to introduce a couple of things so so where uh, let's have the title and let me also add something called as background color which is of type ui color so that's my two protocol elements and let me just create what is wrong here Okay, behavior relay is okay. Should be an array. Even here. So even that is messed up here. Let me correct that. Okay, now it should be good so I don't have uh, okay the representations are there for the protocols right now so team name we call it and the flag let me just call it flag 
so i have those two now i need the class representations so group view model should implement group view presentable it's wrong so it has title and background color so we can have an init here where it will accept the group data so that's the struct we created so for instantiating these uh, view models we can use that so self dot title is equal to group data to dot name let's use that and for the background color let me just create something ui color dot uh, let's call it uh, dark gray maybe yeah and text is already white so that's my view model in it let's also some create for the team view model which should in implement team view presentable so it has name and a flag so it needs to have also have initializers it's in it and use custom init with uh, team data as its parameter team data that's my param so self dot name is equal to team data team dot name flag is equal to logo so that's it my team view model is ready now we can even do customizations based on the name of which we receive but it's just a basic sample just to introduce how to use decoder that's a json decoder so we are at a state where we can create the objects now so let's create an instance of uh, our view model let's call it view model where Um, group view model so that's what this view will consume and whenever the response is received for each group so what it needs to do is add those uh, accept an array of group view model so we need to start creating an array of view models here let's just create that here group items Keep it an array and then just instantiate it dot uh, append uh, new element which is uh, group view model instantiate it'll ask for okay it should be group view model And it will accept group data so let's just, just pass that that's it just consumed it and once the whole uh, group is accepted uh, looped through and created uh, with the array of objects we just pass it to this accept function which is nothing but something which is uh, introduced uh, along with uh, the behavior relay where we have an array pass there and then if you want to ac accept uh, an array uh, then you just call the access function and pass the specific type of array which you have defined like if you go here um, whatever we have defined here it's like a behavior relay is accepting a type of view presentable so whenever we have let's say pass groups dot accept we need to pass an array of uh, group view presentable so that's the only thing which is new here which you need to maybe understand a little but if you are not using RxWiff, then it's pretty much like this uh, using a specific or a, an array, uh, general array type without having any subscriptions to it. So that's only different. So we have already accepted uh, the view models here. 
now uh, let's do the binding of the collection view let's call uh, um, a function bind collection view we already have created the collection view or we have already added the collection we just need to start binding it so before that let's create a configure function within the group collection view cell so this is my collection view which just has nothing but it has a title for the uh, group and then maybe we can set a background to it maybe also have a, a corner radius applied that's the only thing i'll do here so let me just create a function to configure that configure so with uh, view model so each cell will be will be represented by the uh, group view model which we created or view, we'll just pass view model group view presentable the protocol we'll just pass the protocol type so using that protocol now the label group name can be set we'll just use that title and also we can let's say set the views background color so that's also done also like i said we can add a corner radius of maybe 10 so that that's my group uh, collection view cell configuration now let me bind uh, it from the view controller so just i created this bind view collection view and now let me call a view model dot uh, i have the observers now groups observable dot uh, all i need to call is uh, bind to an observable uh, to an observable type so for that uh, my table collection view is an observable type so i can just call collection view groups dot rx dot items and i'll be using one of these so i'm just going to use cell identifier and cell type this, this is the simplest way of binding your table view with uh, a, a data source which is of a specific rx type not recommended much rx data sources is something which is recommended because it has more customizations but for this sample i'm just using this because it's the easiest way of doing it so let me add a cell identifier which is this one is a group uh, cell identifier and cell type is uh, group table view which is already there we have created group table view where is that it's called it's it's, uh, it's group collection view cell dot self so that's done now the configuration code needs to come in where i need uh, important things i need to accept is the group view model and the cell now using that cell i can just call the configure so if you are like getting uh, pretty uh, complicated, I mean, if you are getting confused with this part, then just please refer one of the earlier sessions where I had explained about these things. It will become easier. Otherwise, just uh, just think of it as it this one as uh, cell 4 row 8 index path. You can just implement that. It's uh, nothing much. Just that we are uh, reducing all those... Uh, template codes where you need to pass the count and everything so that's being reduced or optimized here and just pass the it's accepting the view model so let's just pass this group view model so that's the only thing you need to do and finally this is something very specific to rx so don't worry about it so that's the only thing i need to do to bind the table view so view model so there's some error so it is okay this did need to return a specific type so you just return nil and let's make this nilable type and then some changes here response data and then okay so we are back here so nothing major we did we just um, 
configuring the cell using this data received here let's just run it once more and see it should load uh, all the collection view items not yet because we are not registered okay we already registered it but it's not loading the collection view yet that's because we did not call this function yet bind collection view let's call that you can call it anywhere even before this thing happened you can just call it even here it'll just wait for the data to come you can just call here itself So it loads the group information right now. So we have all the H, A to H groups coming from the JSON object. So that's simple as it. Like we did not do much there in reading the JSON object. It's just this much of code. Pass, get the data from the URL. In this case, uh, if it is coming from the server, then this is consume that uh, response, pass it if it is already a data type just pass it to the json decoder it will convert into the specific uh, object which you have we have defined using dec de decodable so that's done now let's just continue fixing the rest of the app side where i just need to have one more thing for binding bind table view so for this one we already have uh, the current teams observable again rx dot items uh, current teams observable we just need to call the bind and pass the observable type in this case it's a table view dot rx dot items and just pass the identifier here i have thing i have defined the identifier as team cell identifier let's use the same and it's the same team table view cell dot self so that's my table view cell type just pass these and then pass the parameters first is the team view model which we already created and the cell so with the cell there we need to create a, within this cell a configure function let's do that so this is my table view cell where uh, I'll be loading uh, the team specific information. So it's it will accept uh, a view model. Which is of type team view presentable. So use that to uh, label team name dot uh, text which is there in the view model name and use the flag I already have an image view where I'll just set the image to my image where named oh, view model dot flag so that's my image which is already there in the assets so from the assets if I have to load an image, I just use this um, in it of uh, UI image. So I guess this will pretty much load it. But we have we are yet to okay something more okay. So we just need to call configure cells of not specific type something missing. okay so cell dot configure with team view presentable so that's my view model here which i'll just pass so let me add this post back so that's my binding for the other view model let me also call it along with this one it's not yet done because we need one more binding to be completed for the collection view we need the uh, object selected the select item model selected so model selected will just give you back the specific type or the object which you are actually selecting 
So that will again be a view model which will be returned. So model selected is accept type, asking for a type. Let's call, which is nothing but group view model. Okay, need the whole thing. Dot, uh, model selected. Let's check items selected. Okay, we, we just need a model selected, which is of type uh, group view model self, and then we'll just call the subscribe to it. So by this, we'll get the view model group view model which we selected from the collection view again very specific to rx no need to worry about it if you are not comfortable with it you can even do it with uh, did selectro uh, it's did selectro at index path So I have the subscribe now. Let's print out the whole error part and all the other thing error. Maybe just to see the dispose, whether it is completed or not and disposed or not. So that's my part. Finally, on selection, what should happen? So on selection, we are uh, showing the table view items but uh, for this uh, we are binding it to the current teams observer so this has to change so whenever current teams object value changes it will subscribe the table view subscribing to those changes so i have this current teams behavioral relay array so this is where uh, i'll create i'll pass the array which is being or the teams array which we already have let's say Let's go back to that. So I have here, where is that group response data? So each group has a teams array. So each whenever there is a selection happening, we will go and get the teams objects and then create the view models related to that and then push it to the current teams uh, object, current teams uh, behavior uh, relay which in turn is having having an observable which is bound to the table view so that the table view will receive those changes and it will bind itself so let's do that now so let me go here wherever it is happening so this is where it the selection is happening where i have the group view model available so group view model has uh, nothing right now so let's create a teams array inside that so that it's easier to do it not the ideal way but i would say for the time sake we can use that so i have this where teams which is nothing but a generic array of uh, team view presentable because we don't need to listen to the changes happening here we just need to retain it and use it uh, to load the other one so let's pass it to even this one group view presentable just initialize it here so that's the only thing we do here so we already have a teams array so we have the group information here which we can use uh, to load even this one all that we need to do is so we have the group data dot uh, group so each group has uh, a teams array loop through that get the team data and then uh, call the teams dot append and pass the team view model which is accepting team data which we already have so that's it so this just creates you the team object so let's go back and then use that here we already have the group view model dot we have teams right now so this is what this is again of type uh, the view presentable which is what we need
which will be accept this array will be accepted now by the uh, the groups uh, view our view model dot uh, current teams dot accept it's accepting this teams pretty simple actually so, so nothing happening here whenever the model model selector or did selector happens we are just uh, passing the teams object uh the view, what whatever the group view models teams has we are just passing it to the current team so that uh, the observable uh, changes its values or, or this array changes its values that in turn rebinds the table view so i i guess we, we are pretty much there where we have the table view binding happening which is already called in view did load so that observable is already set so whenever there is a change happening uh, the current team's observable is there to listen to it so it will configure the cells again and then load the uh, load the table view so let's let's just run it and see we are pretty much done with it i guess so it's loading now let's go select something and you see that it's nothing happening much when you do the selection this is what is happening model selected we know what is the view model being selected here yeah, let's say if it is group c that is my group selected and and that group has an array of teams which i had added whenever that uh, configure uh, whenever that init was happening within the group and i'm just reassigning the current teams value in this using this accept function of uh, behavior relay which is our swift specific if you are not using that you might have to clear all rebind all uh, regular array clear and rebind and call reload data and all that you will have to do i'm just simplifying that step so and uh, within table view is already bound with that observable of this current items observable because that it auto rebinds with the new values received that's pretty simple here so i guess uh, this is what let me just see my team once before i say bye to this mine is argentina so that's my team okay, they are playing in group d so i guess you enjoyed this tutorial and we i'm coming back with more first is another thing which we need to see now is how to use moya along with this moya is an http library to consume rest a rest uh, consume or uh, use rest apis to consume data and uh, after that uh, we will go into uh, how to use uh, the factory method pattern the factory method and we'll venture into abstract factory and all that so until the next episode uh, bye